Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will talk about performance tuning in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how we can do the performance tuning in SSIS. So recently I got several questions from several subscribers to make a video on the performance tuning. So I thought to make a video on this one. So let's see how we can do the performance tuning. Performance tuning is a very wide topic and it won't be possible to cover everything in one video. So maybe I, I may create some more videos on performance tuning. So let's start the first video on the performance tuning. So the first thing that you need to take care is that you should try to execute the task in parallel. So for example, if you have an SSIS package where you need to load the data from flat files and there are several flat files. So you should try to load the data in parallel. So this is my one of the SSIS package that I'm just creating few tables and then I'm loading the city file, then I'm loading customer file and then I'm loading the country file. So this is a sequential process that first of all, all tables will be created, then one file will be loaded, then another file will be loaded and after that the third file will be loaded. And if these three files are not dependent on each other, then what we can do, we can create the tables and then we can load all three files in parallel. Okay. So let me show you how we can do that. So this is the another package. First we are creating a table and then we are using a sequence container and then we have put all the three tasks inside the sequence container and then we have removed the precedence constraints so that all three tasks will run in parallel. So this is one of the method that you should try to execute the task in parallel. Similarly, if you are trying to create indexes on a table, so cluster index will be created sequentially, but after cluster index, suppose if there are 20 non cluster index or 25 non cluster index, then you can create four or five different tasks and you can try to create the indexes in parallel. Okay, so just try to do the things in parallel. So this is one of the first thing that you need to take care. The second thing is that you should try to load only the required columns from the source. So in a data flow task, if you are loading data from a flat file or if you are loading data from maybe Excel or from SQL server, then you should only try to load the columns. Those are actually required for your task because I have seen, I have worked on some projects where in my file I can have maybe 20 columns or 50 columns, but only three or four columns are required or five columns are required, but sometimes all columns are required. Okay. So in case if only three or four columns are required uh, out of 50 columns or 100 columns, then you should try to import only the required columns because it saves the time and as well as the space on the disk. While using the flat file source, use the correct data type. So when we create a flat file connection manager, SSIS by default assigns the varchar 50 data type to every column, okay, until unless you modify it. Most of the time when you get the data from a client, then you also get the header information for the file as well. So that you know that, for example, the ID column, if there is an ID column, what is the data type for the ID? And for example, there is some city column or maybe country column, then what should be the data type like varchar 20 or varchar 25, okay, the length of the field. So you should give the correct data type and the correct length for each field because it saves the space and the time as well to execute the overall SSIS package. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I got this SSIS package load only required data and in the first data flow task load file, what I'm doing here, I'm loading the data from a CSV file to a SQL server table, okay. So if I show you this particular flat file source. So I'm just using a flat file connection manager with the name flat file. Okay. And for example, if I open this particular flat file connection manager, so if you click on the advanced, so you can see that I got the columns like ID, first name, last name, address and country. Okay. So for all the columns, the data type is a string and the length is 50. Okay. But this should not be the case. Ideally, we should have the correct data type and the correct length of each field. Okay. So there is an option here. So if you don't have the layout from the client that what is the data type and length of each field, then what you can do, you can just try this option suggest types. Okay. So you can click on suggest types and then you can click on OK. So what this will do that according to the data in the flat file, it will suggest to the correct data types. For example, for the ID, it selected two bytes sign integer. And for first name, it selected the data type is string and the length is 11. For last name, it selected the length as 12. For address, it selected the length as 28. And for country, it selected the length as 32. So this is one of the method that instead of selecting the all column data type as a string 50, we should use the correct data type. Okay. 
so this is one of the thing that you can take care now the next thing is that while using the oledb source as a source write sql command to fetch the data instead of table or view so what i mean here for example if i am fetching the data from a sql server table and inserting into a csv file so if you check this particular source what i have done here that i'm just exporting the data from the customer table into a csv file so i have selected data access mode table or view and i have selected the customer table so instead of using the table or view option you should write the sql command here and you should properly write a select query to select the data from a sql server table so my customer table exists in this particular database so what i can do i can write a select query here and i can just modify this query i can remove the top 100 execute so i can copy this particular query from here and then i can paste the query inside the sql command so this way this is the best way to select the data from the sql server table and then you can just export the data to the csv file so this is one of the method that you should try now the next option is that wherever possible do the transformations in source instead of doing it in a transformation component okay so what i mean here that you should try to do the most of the transformations in source component instead of doing it in a transformation component so for example let me show you what i mean here so for example i'm selecting the data from this particular table and we got like first name and last name and suppose i want to concatenate the two columns like i want to concatenate first name plus last name to make a full name okay so i can do this thing in using a derived column transformation as well but if you will try to use the derived column transformation then it will use a new buffer and it needs extra memory so it is suggested that if possible you should try to do the transformation in the source components so what you can do you can write the concatenation query here like first name plus last name full name so you can concatenate the data here similarly you can do all like trim function or replace everything most of the thing whatever are possible you can do in the source query and then you can avoid using the transformations if possible so this is one of the way avoid using the asynchronous transformations wherever possible okay so asynchronous transformations are the one which actually do not release the rows as they are read from the source so for example if some hundred records are coming from the source and the transformation whatever transformation you are using if the transformation is not releasing all the rows at the same time then it means that they are the asynchronous transformations so there are two type of asynchronous transformations semi blocking asynchronous transformations and fully blocking asynchronous transformations so the fully blocking asynchronous transformations are like sort transformations in case if you are selecting data from a sql server table if you are sorting the data based on some columns like id last name or maybe date created or something if possible you should try to use the sort query order by query in the source itself so you can avoid using the sort transformation if possible so that can help you a lot but sometimes for example if you are using the merge transformations then we have to use the sort transformation okay we don't have any other choice similarly for example if you are using a semi blocking asynchronous transformations like merge join transformation then if possible try to do the join in the sql query so suppose if you are fetching data from one source which is a for example sql server query and another source is a csv file then you can also try to import the csv file into sql server table and then just do the join in a sql query okay instead of doing it in a transformations you can actually test the both cases like you can test the semi blocking asynchronous transformations as well and then you can think of using the sql query option as well okay so first import the data into a sql query and then try using an inner join and make sure that you create the indexes on the joining columns so you can try both the options and you should use whatever option is faster for you so there are a lot of options available for the performance tuning in ssis and, and in sql server as well so in next video i will try to discuss some more options which can improve the performance of our ssis packages so i think that's it for today's video Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button, do subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.